Hello everyone and welcome to PC Retro Tech. In this week's video I'm going to be getting back to the CJ graphics library that I've been working on and I have some really exciting developments to share with you. So long time viewers of the channel know that I've been working on this on my 8088 machines. Uh, so this is an IBM PC at 4.77 MHz. And uh, this is an XT clone also with an 8088 but at 10 MHz. Now the first thing I want to show you is the ellipse code I've been working on. And it might sound like a simple thing, but I've actually been working on this for months. Uh, in a previous video I showed you that if you draw ellipses nested inside one another, every now and again it skips a pixel, and that's because of artifacts in the ellipses. And I thought I'd pushed everything absolutely as far as I possibly could with the code, and it really wasn't clear if I was going to be able to solve the problems. I had managed to work out how to draw ellipses without turning interrupts off, and that means saving a register. So already I pushed things really hard to get to that point. Uh, so it's literally taken weeks of additional effort, and I finally have uh, ellipses that are pixel perfect. And the amazing thing is that the performance isn't impacted. So let me show you what it looks like now. This is how it looks now, and it's pixel perfect. Uh, so the problem turned out to be something very simple. When you draw an ellipse, you have a vertical-ish part and you have a horizontal-ish part at the top. And in between, the ellipse is at a slope of 45 degrees, and that's the point that you switch over. Now, there wasn't a bug in the code, but the problem was that I was making the assumption that at the 45 degree point, I can jump diagonally up and to the left. Now, that would be true if I were on a smooth ellipse and I were at the exact point where it was 45 degrees. But because I'm using pixels here, I'm never actually at the exact point where I can jump 45 degrees. And it just works out in the maths that every now and again you hit an ellipse where that's not the correct jump to make. So all that I needed to do was to add an additional case to check, should I really be jumping 45 degrees at this crossover point? And once I did that, I managed to get rid of a vast majority of the uh, artifacts that I was seeing. Now, there were also some bugs with some very thin ellipses in the vertical and horizontal direction. They were just code bugs and easy to fix. Uh, but then I ran the ellipse uh, algorithm through exhaustively in a higher level language in Julia uh, to check that every single point that was being drawn was correct. And this turned out to be not quite the case. And the reason is because of approximations that I'd made. So you really want to have 32-bit registers uh, when drawing ellipses. But unfortunately, we don't have 32-bit registers. It's a 16-bit machine. And we also don't have enough registers. So what I was doing was packing stuff into 24 bits and using one and a half registers for each of the values that you've got to keep track of and then just sort of shifting the data about to make maximal use of that 24-bit approximation. And then I was only doing uh, decisions, you know, jumps, jump of above, jump of above or equal, etc., based on the top 16 bits. And, of course, this approximation was leading to artifacts. So what I did instead was to go through and find all the ellipses that had artifacts and make a lookup table. And there weren't very many, so it's not a huge table. And what it does is it self-modifies the code before it starts running to use the other jump. So if it was jump of above, it might become jump of above and equal. And uh, so this fixed all of the remaining artifacts in the code. Now there's one thing left to do. Uh, when I switched over to code that didn't use the stack pointer, in other words, so that I could leave interrupts on, uh, I actually had to introduce an additional push and pop into the code. And believe it or not, these are 15 cycles each on an 8088, really slow. So I worked quite hard and eventually found a way to eliminate the push and pop. So now the code runs optimally, and it's about as fast as I think you're ever going to get this ellipse code to run. I'm really happy with the result. It's, it looks fantastic, and it's now at 140 cycles per pixel. It has a large startup cost of about 8,700 cycles, but this is only about 16 pixels per uh, quadrant, which is not too bad. So the end result is fast and it's perfect. So I put the code into the graphics library and it's ready to use. 
Now the next thing I want to discuss is rotor zooms and the first one I want to show you is not one I wrote myself. Uh, this is obviously got a lot of snow on it uh, and it's a demo that was written for an 8086 demo competition that was run by Trickster many many years ago. In fact the only 8086 demo competition I can find. Uh, so this demo is called 8086 feet under and you can see that there's a lot of flashing and snow going on and the reason for this is that it's running in 80 by 25 text mode on original IBM hardware. So it turns out that in that mode on an original CGA card which this machine has, uh, you'll get snow if you write to the video memory at the same time that it's trying to read uh, to update the screen. So in order to avoid that, what you would have to do is wait until it was in horizontal or vertical retrace uh, before doing any updates. And of course that would slow things down dramatically. Now the problem is, this is already at a glacial 8.6 frames per second, uh, which is really slow. So if you went even slower still, uh, it basically would just look like a slideshow. Now I scratch my head a lot to, th you know, why would they enter a, something with so much snow in an 8086 competition? But of course I'm running this on an 8088 machine with original CGA hardware. The demo machine uh, for the competition was an 8086 machine which didn't have the same hardware. So let me show you something really interesting. Here it is running on my XT at 10 megahertz, uh, but this machine has a CGA clone card in it with double ported RAM. So now all of that snow is gone. Uh, so this was really an exciting finding because it means that on these machines, and that includes my Amstrad PC1512 for example, which also has double ported RAM, you don't have to worry about waiting for the horizontal sync pulse uh, in order to start drawing on the screen. Uh, you can just draw at any time, which means that the whole thing goes so much faster than it does on original hardware. And so this code is actually 18 frames per second on this machine. Uh, but this is not as fast as you can go. Uh, let me show you another version of this code that was written by someone else uh, that runs even faster. This is the version of the code written by one of the judges in the competition called Shadow Lord. And this runs at 29.9 frames per second. Now I don't exactly know what he's done to make this run faster, but I noticed, for example, the scroller that was at the bottom of the screen has gone missing. Uh, I assume that there's a little bit more to it than that. But this really shows that on these machines with double ported RAM, you can do some amazing full screen stuff. Now of course the resolution here is only 80 by 50, uh, which is pretty low. Uh, it's still certainly visually appealing. Uh, but I've come up with something even better. I can do 80 by 50, so the same resolution that we have here on original hardware without snow at high speed. So let me show you what I've come up with. Before I can do a rotor zoom, I need a picture of course, and so this is what I came up with. I drew this in Deluxe Paint uh, Enhanced Edition 2, which is sometimes called Deluxe Paint 3. And the reason I did that is because it's saved to PCX files and I have code for reading PCX files. Uh, but more about that in a moment. Uh, by the way, do you like my gecko? I spent ages drawing this thing. I'm not much of a pixel artist as you can see. Uh, normally pixel art should be more stylized and cartoonish uh, than this. This is more like an impressionist painting or something like that. But I'm still pretty happy with the way it turned out. Unfortunately you'll see a little bit later it's not the best image to use for a rotor zoom. Uh, but it'll do. Uh, so at the top here I have uh, a PC Retro Tech as well. So this image is 256 by 256 and this is ideal for a rotor zoom because that means as you draw this thing uh, once you get to the edge of the image uh, you're at exactly 256 pixels and so if you're storing the coordinates in a byte it'll just wrap around automatically to zero again so you'll get the image repeating both in the horizontal and vertical directions. Uh, so I actually had a little bit of trouble drawing this. Uh, first of all, I started doing this using EGA on uh, my XT machine. But unfortunately, every time I would move the image, uh, you know, using this hand tool here, I'd get a whole load of corruption on the screen. And I couldn't figure out what was going wrong, so I 
you know, put in a different EGA card and I tried a whole lot of things to get it to work, but I still kept getting corruption. Tried it on a different machine, same problem. Eventually, I got it to work by running it on my 286, and it seems that there's actually a bug in the deluxe paint code that stops it from working correctly on uh, 8086 or 8088 machines. You really need to have a 286 in order for the thing to work reliably. There was no way at all that I could draw this picture. Even just saving the file would cause a whole lot of uh, you know, corruption. There'd be vertical lines going through the image and it would be a total mess. Uh, but I did get it to go in the end and I'm pretty happy with this result. Uh, the other thing about this code is that it's going to be saved in EGA mode. This is 16 color EGA. Uh, Deluxe Paint certainly doesn't support the 16 color CGA that we want to draw. The problem is that EGA uses bit planes. So each of the RGB and I uh, pieces of color information is stored in a different bit plane in memory. And uh, so when it's saved to a file, you know, a PCX file, it's not in the correct format for uh, CGA. So I had to write a program to actually convert this image into a 16 color, albeit text mode, uh, CGA picture. And so basically I had to take, you know, one bit from each of the bit planes, put them together into a 4-bit nibble, and put that into a byte. Uh, so once I had done that, I was able to load this picture uh, for a rotor zoom. So let me show you the 80 by 50 rotor zoom that I came up with using this picture. Now this is my rotor zoom program, and there is a warning here that it only runs on CGA hardware. It could even damage EGA or VGA hardware, so just be careful if you do run this. Uh, the code is in my GitHub repository. Uh, so the first thing it does is compute a sine or cosine table, just because computing those in real time is very slow. And then it loads the graphic from the disk uh, that's in PCX format and converts it into uh, the CGA text mode colors that we want uh, from the bit plane format. And this is the result. It's 80 by 50, uh, but the thing is, this is running on original hardware and there's no snow. And the other thing is that Shadow Lord's program, the fast one, ran at 14.9 frames per second. This is running at 25 frames per second. So how did I do this? Well, it turns out that there are two modes. There's 80 by 25 and 40 by 25, and only one of those has snow on original hardware. So I used the 40 by 25. To get 80 by 50 resolution, what I did is I used half characters. So in original CJ hardware, you can set the number of lines per character. So instead of setting it to 8, I set it to 4, which effectively doubles the number of characters you can have down the screen. And across the screen, I used a character that was the background color on one half and the text color on the other half. And so that enables me to effectively double the resolution in the horizontal direction as well. So I get the full resolution and I get no uh, artifacts. But that doesn't explain the speed. The speed uses an old demo scene trick uh, called self-modifying code. And what it does is it uses the same code for each line of the image, uh, but it self-modifies that code uh, so that it runs as fast as possible. Now, you've got your 256 by 256 picture that you're reading data from, and you're jumping across by a fixed amount uh, for each pixel that you want to draw. Uh, you're jumping through that 256 by 256 image. Now, of course, uh, you're going to draw, do exactly the same thing for each line, it's just at a different position in the image. So you can reuse the same code that's used for each line uh, over and over again, and because you're going to use it so much, you may as well make it as fast as possible. So what I do before anything runs is that I modify that so that it has all of the jumps through the 256 by 256 image hard-coded into that line code. And so, therefore, there's no computations to be done at runtime. It's literally just jump by a certain amount, read the data, and put it to the screen. Jump by a certain amount, read the data, and put it on the screen, and so on. 
And so this is much faster than doing all the computations that have to occur at runtime. And so this uh, ended up giving me a really fast result and uh, without the snow that we saw. Uh, but there's more. I can do a higher resolution, of course, on the XT machine. So let me show you that. And here's the same rotor zoom, but running on 80 by 25 text mode on my XT machine at 10 megahertz. So the machine's twice as fast, of course, but now I've got a resolution that's twice in both directions. So I get 160 by 100. And the reason for that is because I'm 80 characters across now, and so if I use half characters between foreground and background color, then I get 160. And to get 100 down the screen, I'm using a character height of just 2 pixels. So I'm really happy with this result. Uh, it's running at about 13.6 frames per second, uh, which is a little on the slow side. You can actually see the jerking uh, a little if you watch closely. Uh, but by the way, that uh, 40 by 25 text mode version that I already showed you, uh, that runs at 42.2 frames per second on this machine. So you can get some really screamingly high frame rates. Uh, so I'm really happy with this result because what it means is that I can actually do a whole load of full screen graphics that don't suck on original 8088 CGA hardware, uh, which was my goal all along. Now, of course, I'm not the first person to do all of this stuff. Uh, the guys who wrote the 8088 MPH demo uh, really show what's possible with this hardware. But I'm learning all of this uh, for the first time myself. And it's really fun to finally see something like this come together and even to break some old records. Uh, so, uh, obviously, if you enjoy this sort of thing, uh, then don't forget to give a like. Uh, hey, <laughs> give a like for the gecko. Uh, anyway, that's all I really have time for this week, and uh, so don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in a later video. Bye!